The idea behind home power generation is not a new one. Thousands of small wind turbines dotted the landscape in the early part of the last century, only to be replaced by rural electric cooperatives, or RECs. Though most of the first generation turbines may have been relegated to ornamental status, there has been a resurgence of the concept over the past few years. For John Clough of rural Nevada, Iowa, today signals the end of eight months of research and four months of climbing over paperwork and construction hurdles. I can't believe it at this point. You think back to the winds of January when you had no idea that you were going to make it this far. You can't believe it. <laughs> As chief accountant for the Department of Energy's Ames Laboratory, located on the campus of Iowa State University, Clough was inspired to erect a turbine on his acreage to cover some of his electrical demand. Right now is the right time because of the tax incentives that are going on right now from the federal government. It's the right time to do it. You want to think green at times. If, and also I work at a place that works with the energy. If the people who are creating energy solutions aren't doing it, no one else can believe it. Updated for the 21st century, the new units turn in winds of as little as eight miles per hour and provide alternating current to operate readily available household appliances. More often than not, the units supplement power needs in rural settings, but also are capable of supplying enough electricity to run a home completely disconnected from the power grid. After learning the price of his electricity was going to increase this year, Clow knew the $17,000 he paid for the 1.8 kilowatt turbine was a good idea. Several states offer incentives for renewable energy investment, and Clow will be taking advantage of the federal government's 30% tax credit. For a person who's out in, the, in a rural situation who has a little higher electrical bills, it makes sense at this time. It's a long-term thing. It could take 20 years to recoup the cost, but it still you're doing your part, I could potentially reduce maybe a third to a half of the monthly bill. According to the American Wind Energy Association, or AWEA, Iowa ranks second in commercial wind power generation, turning out nearly 3,000 of the sector's 28,000 megawatts. When it comes to what is known as small wind, AWEA statistics show there are more than 10,000 turbines in the U.S., producing a little more than 17 megawatts. More than 90% of the units are grid-connected like clouds. And according to a 2009 AWEA study, sales of small turbines between 2008 and 2009 increased by 20%. 65 miles to the southwest, another small wind user is already taking advantage of the savings. Roy Jobes put up a wind turbine on his rural Earlham, Iowa farm where his auto repair business and house share property. Since its installation in March, Jobst has watched his turbine feed power back to the grid on the meter outside his shop. The first bill we got was, our electric bill was $50. Normally it's around $120. With days like this one, Jobst is expecting his turbine to pay for itself in 10 years. Everybody's going green, you know, this is a coming thing down the road and wind energy basically, you know, is free. All you do is pay for the original investment and, you know, from there on it's money in the bank. Both Jobst and Clough are customers of small wind vendor James McCain. McCain became interested in helping Iowans generate their own green power after receiving his two-year degree in 2007. Instead of investing in two more years of higher education, he decided to fulfill his dream by opening Innovative Kinetics. I was looking for people in this industry and I realized there was nobody in 200 miles doing what I do. So it was really kind of passion and just chance um, that, that drove me to this spot. And it was really a way for me to quit complaining about what was going on and actually do something about the problems. From his Des Moines, Iowa-based business, McCain specializes in sales and installation of small-scale wind turbines, solar power arrays, and biodiesel distillation units. McCain says there are still several hurdles that small wind owners encounter, like permitting. Because the turbines are mounted on towers over 50 feet tall, 
Jobst and Clow paid $1,000 for the proper county zoning and construction permits. Every time we do this, it gets easier and easier. And we start to see some real fruits of our labors coming out of it. While working through the bureaucratic paperwork maze, both men had to get interconnection agreements with their local power providers. Clow's provider is Consumers Energy, an REC with 5,000 members in five central Iowa counties. Hardly a week goes by that we don't get three or four phone calls about wind turbines. These aren't farmers that have a bunch of land they want to lease to a wind farm. They're mostly homeowners that want to cut their energy bill. In the past, power companies have had a reputation of balking at the purchase of more expensive so-called renewable energy. But officials at consumers were more than willing to honor requests made by their members. I think probably for most utilities, it is a change of mind. As time has gone by, you realize that, hey, this is the way it's going to go. We're going to have more renewable energy. And, and the wind is a good supplement. Clow pays 12 cents for every kilowatt he purchases from consumers. In turn, consumers will bank any unused electricity and offset Clow's bill at the same 12 cent per kilowatt rate. Clow realizes he is a pioneer in small wind power generation and readily embraces his role. Someone's got to take the chance. Someone's got to be the first. Someone's got to help out in that little way. And that's where I've also come from, beyond the economics. You've got to say, well, here's my little part. For Market to Market, I'm David Miller.